welcome to lecture 54 which is on GIS database and their users. In this lecture I shall cover what are the uh, utilities of the databases and how these databases are generated and how to handle the manage the entire database. So, when I am talking about the database I mean the tables the various tabular data which is generated in the GIS. So, let us begin the lecture. Uh, once we have the vector data features in the form of point, line and area polygon features in the GIS. So, one we have the geometry and another is the attribute. So, we will mm, focus today on the attribute. So, various tables if I have three uh, kind of features there will be three kind of tables generated and if I have then another layer uh, another table will be generated. So, that way if I have 10 layers uh, several tables would be generated. So, these tables are stored in the database there is a proper format and you can make use of this table for extraction of the data for merging the two features together that is what we are learning in this particular lecture here. So, when we are talking of the uh, vector data and the tables, so we have uh, feature classes in the primary components, then uh, we have the feature data sets and known spatial data sets. Uh, you have learned in the previous lecture, uh, you create the topology of the features. So, these are the features for which the topology has already been created. So, topology will tell the relationship with the adjacent feature, contaminant feature or the networking. So, that is also now very very important when we have done that and created the tables, several tables of the spatial maps. Now, the uh, next task is to create a relationship amongst those tables so that we can uh, handle all that tabular data, we can create a link, we can make a query, we can uh, store the data, merge the data, split the tables. So, there are various functionalities which could be performed with this tabular data. So, uh, this uh, spatial data I am showing you in the form of the maps which are the spatial maps, but this is a, a tabular data here. But what you can see in this is that there is a particular line data which has been you know the entire record which has been selected. So, a polygon has been selected in this case it is the California state and uh, that polygon has been selected uh, in the database and the tabular data. So, in the spatial maps also this particular polygon is highlighted. So, whatever selection I am making on my tabular data I can see the results immediately on my spatial map or it could be other way around also. If I click on the California polygon then this particular line uh, blue line will be highlighted. So, that means I am talking of uh, the attribute data which is related to this particular polygon. So, this is how we call it a two way communication between the spatial maps, the spatial data and the tabular data. Now, the attribute data is about the what of a spatial data. So, this is very very important what and where is very very important and uh, this particular table as you have seen that this is arranged in the rows and columns. Uh, some data is automatically created by the software when you are creating these features when you are digitizing point line and area features. Whereas, you need to create additional rows and columns uh, when you like to enter the information additional information about those features collected either from the reference data or from the ground information. So, these raw the data in a raw that is called a records map feature. So, this is the map feature which has a unique actually label id. So, there is a uh, unique id and through which through that unique id we can identify the object, we can locate and we can make the query, we can make the selection. So, every feature in the every line you can see that it is actually linked with the object id. So, this object id is very very important. The user has to 
create that object ID and uh, the software will uh, identify the objects with this ID only. Then columns are the fields. So, rows are the records in the table, the columns there are several columns which are the fields. You can create additional rows and additional fields it depends uh, on the quantum of the data which you are handling. Various columns uh, you can show the value of the attribute, these attribute could be the color, the ownership, the magnitude, you know the classification of that particular land. So, any information you can keep on adding in these columns. Now, you have to handle very large amount of maps. We, when we are working with the GIS, when we carry out the analysis with the GIS, it is not the single map, it is not a single table. But there are various maps and there are various attribute tables which are to be handled together in order to carry out that application part. So, several maps we are integrating. For example, if uh, we have to align a road in the area, what we require? We require a slope map, we require existing road network map, drainage map, we require land use and land cover map, we require the soil, geology, many maps would be required, many input parameters which be required in order to finally determine the alignment of a new road. So, each of these maps now will have its own attribute table. So, we are dealing now large number of attribute tables and we are dealing with a large number of maps in order to derive the useful results. So, effective use of this uh, tabular data we can make uh, with the help of the database management system which is available in almost every GIS package because this is the essential condition of a GIS package. So, this short form is called DBMS, so database management system which is the inbuilt capability of any GIS software, we are making use of that now in order to handle those various attribute tables. Now, why do you require this database? Because uh, each feature has to be uh, uh, identified with respect to its unique ID. So, um, one particular feature for example, here the soil cover is taken as the example, if we have a soil, it may have very large number of uh, physical and chemical properties associated with it. So, in order to differentiate that, you know, the soil with the different physical and chemical properties, we need to give a particular ID, a unique ID to each record. And this is that record, uh, the uh, software will try to identify or try to extract only that information which we require out of the whole lot. Now, this uh, uh, DBMS is also required to manage multiple tables. As I told you that we have more than one tables when we are working with the data. There are uh, four types of uh, uh, databases are there, tabular databases, four types are there, which are flat file hierarchical database network database and relational database. So, uh, in GIS we are uh, most of the time using relational database because we have to link several tables together, we have to create a relationship between one table and the another table with the help of some common columns, so, we will come to that point. So, this relational database is also known as the RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. So, this RDBMS is the uh, additional capability in the GIS software where uh, we have the database from the different sources, from different maps and still we can integrate them together, try to establish a relationship, correlate them together and derive a, a new map or a create a new table out of the all the tables. So, these are the different kind of a digital database format which are shown here. A flat type of a table is there where uh, you have some kind of a ID in the first column and then the other details which are given on the other columns. 
the hierarchical system is if you see the flat table um, the hierarchical system is that uh, in the uh, flat table there are two zones if you see the last column the uh, zone 1 and zone 2 these are shown in the bracket here in the last column and uh, if I represent that information a flat file information in the form of the hierarchical group then I have the zoning on the top and there are two zones zone 1 and zone 2 which is shown in the area here and then under zone 1 as shown in the flat file that we have uh, P101 plot P104 plot uh, but under zone 2 we have for example 102 and 103 and so on like that and then these p101 plot you can now correlate with the honor so for example the wang or the chang or smith they are the honors of these plots so they are linked now there is a you can see for uh, uh, this is plot uh, p101 there are two honors so that is why uh, there are two branches afterwards and it is linked then similarly um, in uh, zone number 2 we have plot 102 and 103 so who are the owner the names are listed over here smith jones etc so this is uh, the structure which we call hierarchical structure which is again linked and conveying you the information which is shown in the flat file when we are talking of the uh, network based model here then we have the zoning and ownership and we have two types of zoning one and two and there are several honors five honors are there and then they are you know linked together there is a connectivity between the plot and the uh, honor for example the wang mr wang is uh, connected to p101 so there are four plots which are shown at the bottom and then the connectivity is shown by the line so this if we show this kind of a networking you know interconnection between the each of the uh, columns then this is called the networking model then the lastly is the relational uh, model and relational model is also very important when we are working with the GIS so zoning and ownership is there and they are all related to the land parcel uh, P101 to 104 these are the land parcels and there is a zone code and there is a pin code so this is the kind of a relationship which one can establish between the zone and the ownership also so uh, understanding that the uh, the structure is very very important because we are storing the data uh, following one of these structures. So uh, what is DBMS? It is the organized now collection of the data. So uh, we are not actually putting up the table in a haphazard manner but it is a very organized way of representing the, the data, tabular data and there are many DBMS software like access the file maker lotus notes oracle sql server so these are some of the other software which provides the flexibility to create the dbms and the best part of the gis software is that these uh, databases which you are creating from the external software they are compatible with the existing gis software so if you have excel sheet if you have uh, a database which is created in the oracle so that can be uh, directly imported into the system now it includes uh, uh, tools also uh, you can add you can modify or you can delete the database from the database as you are doing in that so you can edit the data you can also very important thing is ask question or queries so that is very very important aspect of GIS software that from the whole data set we want to um, pick one data set or make a query from the entire data set and like to know uh, whether that kind of uh, relationship exists in the data set or not. So that query can be placed and you can get the uh, answer of your query from the database. Or you can actually produce the report summarizing the selected content so you could be selective also from the entire database 
So you want to select uh, only a one type of feature or you want to select the feature uh, which has a uh, relationship with the other feature. So uh, as we know that, that now the DBMS is a very organized and uh, collection of the data and this data is logically coherent. So you can apply some kind of a logic and probably you can derive the desired information as per the logic. It will uh, define, create and maintains this database also DBMS and it will allow the controlled access to the data in the database. So this is uh, all the function of the DBMS. If we further see that uh, what this DBMS is doing, it is basically transforming transforming the data which we have collected from the different sources into information and that information is converted into the knowledge based on certain decisions, based on certain rules and that knowledge now is created into the action because that knowledge has been converted into some kind of a output some kind of a recommendations, some kind of a desired results. So, we once we have the desired results, then those desired results uh, are converted into actions. So, either the management is to be done from that or maybe uh, some conservation measures are to be taken. So, these are those actions. Now, there is another term which is called relational database management system. And this is very, very important. All GIS software will have this relational database management system. And uh, this is the uh, basically uh, collection of the large number of tables and establishing their relationship between them. So in this table, when we have large number of tables, um, there are keys. Uh, there are many keys. We'll uh, explain here the primary key. There's a primary key and there is a foreign key. These are very, very important uh, because these keys will establish the relationship between the two table. So what is the primary key? Primary key is representing one or more attributes in a table. So I have several columns in the table. So one uh, column will represent one attribute. So there could be uh, one or more attributes whose values are uniquely identified by the ID record in the table and if I have its counterpart a similar kind of a column in the other table um, that will I will call it a foreign key. So these two primary key uh, you know the has a foreign key is similar uh, to the uh, belonging to the primary key. So primary key, the data which is in the primary key is similar to the data in the foreign key and because of this similarity, the relationship could be established. So the advantage of having the relational database is that each table in the database can be prepared, can be maintained, can be edited separately from the other table. So they, uh, you can treat them separately from each other and you can also create a data link. You can efficiently use all the tables for data management. Uh, you can create another table, another output or you can carry out some kind of a query based analysis. So you can use those tables together and do that with the help of primary key and the foreign key which is present. Now there could be many, many uh, relationships when we try to make some permutations and combinations from this data. So we may have um, one to one relationship, uh, one to many relationships, many to one and many to many relationship. So this we will explain you with the help of uh, some tables. If we have the tables, how these relationships could be established. So let us see uh, in the form of the table one to one relationship is that I have one set of table here, another set of table there. So two tables, now I am creating a relationship of line one with the line one of the another table. So these lines which are shown in the middle here, they are showing the relationship and this is called one to one relationship. Now when I say one to many relationship, 
in the second figure it's one too many relationships are shown so there is a one record so this is the one record here and it has relationship with the other records uh, several other records in the next table so you can see that the record number 1 is linked to record number 1 here and record number 3 in the next table so this is called one to many relationship so one record could be related to more than one in the next table the third one is many to one relationship so that means that several records in my first table uh, they might be linked to the single record in the next table so here this is the example that several records in the first table are connected to the single record in the first table so this is opposite to the the second case then uh, we have uh, many to many relationships so there are records in the tables and uh, uh, one record is connected to more than uh, one record in the next table and same thing is happening the other way around also this is called many to many relationship so we have to actually uh, according to the utility according to the derived results uh, some of these relationships will be used uh, as per our project objective and application part so the example is shown here that uh, how this relational database is working and i am showing you one to one relationship here so there is a table on the left and there is a table on the right so if we uh, concentrate on this table now you can see here in this particular table we have the primary key now primary key can be more than two columns here like column one and column two here we are calling the primary key but this uh, foreign key is a subset of the primary key so whatever you see in the first column city name and there are several city names written over here the same city name appears actually in the first column of the first table so these two are common so one i will call it the primary key the second one i will call it the foreign key and it is the relational database will create a relationship between the two itself so i want to create a relationship amongst the two table and want to generate another table or link the data and derive another data from the other table i can do that very very quickly so that relationship could be established so that means the information which is available in the another table i can actually pick up with the help of this primary and secondary key and join them together so let us see <coughs> another example of one to one relationships so we have a, a table on the left and a table on the right and uh, what is common is the uh, first column first column is the this is the uh, primary key this is a uh, foreign key and uh, from these two tables now we can actually generate another table here and uh, in the first table i have the population data of 1990 in the last column population data of 1997 in the second column of the second table i want to carry out the change analysis in the area so there are two table there are the data of the same area in those two tables I would like to carry out what is the change in the population from 1990 to 97. So we can create uh, something like this a database using the two together and then uh, use this database to carry out the change analysis. So one to one join is uh, for example here in the table we have employee ID and the job and in the second table we have employee ID and the name so when you are joining them together you are getting three columns where employee id is there job is there and name is there so you can actually merge the database also together once you have the distributed data at different places now this is the example of one to many and in one to many uh, in the first column we have company names so there are company names and uh, the in the second table uh, also we have a company name but only one company name is appearing and there are owners name of the shop owners are given so 
um, that means this particular company has several shops in a particular area and these are the owners. So one to many relationship is that with the help of the primary key and foreign key you know you can make a relationship and you can find out that how many shop owners are there for the company which is called Cotraya. So you can identify how many shops are there and how many shop owners are there in a particular region. So this is established by one to many. This could be done with for the other areas also. So this is one to many relationship shows that we have uh, in the first table there are uh, department, there are advisors and in the second table you know we have the advisor and the names of the advisors. So if we try to club these together and try to establish one to many relationship we can get finally the table something like that. So this is one to many relationship where we can actually establish uh, from one sector, one department we can calculate uh, the link we can establish the link to there. This is one to many uh, relationships is there which shows that we have uh, for example a quaternary alveolium and permeum abo. So here you can see symbol is QA. So in the second table the QA quartz uh, mineral and QA is linked with the gypsum also. So this is one to many relationship that we can establish that uh, what are the different minerals to which this quaternary alluvium is uh, linked. Many to one is just opposite to the previous one which we have learnt here but see the example here. There are tables uh, with the three columns and uh, there is a next table where we have uh, vegetation type, name, dominant and pH of the soil type. So we can establish for example the you can see the D1 vegetation type could be linked to the first row of the first table and also to the third row of the first table. So this D1 is linked to uh, one is linked to many in the first table. So that is how you can now create the output kind of a table where you are showing the uh, site in the first column and then you are showing what is the area and then what is the vegetation type. Okay. And what was not present in this table now, first table was the name and the dominant and the pH soil type. So all that information is taken from the second table once we have that relationship. Many to one relationships, uh, uh, you know when we are joining them together after join, we can get something like that. So the join is a function, so we can use that join function to join the two table and we can get the information as shown in the table here. Now lastly the many to many relationships here and in many to many relationships also you know we have for example here there is a formation 1 and formation 2 the symbol is QA here but QA is related to the quartz and QA is related to the gypsum. So that is the many to many many here and many here relationships is there. So if you look at the uh, tables uh, linked by the keys. So we have a table called parcel table, another table called address table, third called honor table and fourth called the zone table. So these tables now can be interlinked together with the help of the primary keys and with the help of the uh, foreign key and uh, create a larger database from these four tables linked together. So these tables um, uh, when we are using software like uh, for example ArcGIS software, so this is called the spatial table or the attribute table which has the spatial location relationship within the spatial data. The other tables called non-spatial tables which can be either join or relate to the spatial data sets. So, we can use the join relationship, we can use the relate relationship. So there are many functions actually which could be used in order to use them. So uh, I am giving the example here join relate uh, where uh, we have taken the four categories before. So we have one to one relationship, one to many, many to one and many to many relationships. So 
uh, some of the functionalities where we are using join, where we are using the relate relationships in order to create a bigger table. So, these are the two tables here, uh, database tables. So, two tables uh, are to be now joined together. So, we have table 1 where uh, some other data sets for a particular feature is given, a feature ID is given in the third column. Now, we have a similar feature ID in the second column of the second table, but there is some other information which is given in the other table. So, we want to make use of the entire information of the data. So, we uh, join the table. So, join function is used and we can get the entire data set which is available in one table and now this data set data could be stored in one single table or you can uh, carry out the analysis or make the query from this data set. So, relate when we are using the relate function these are the two tables now how to correlate these two tables together. So, this is the example and here we are relating a particular you can see a, a particular uh, line here has been related to the data set which is given in the table 2. So, this relate relationship is also very very useful when we want to see the relationship of a data which is given in one table with the relationship of the data given in the another table. So, just to summarize the, uh, the database vector features have attributes and these attributes will describe the properties of the features. The attribute tables, the, uh, attributes are stored in the table and we have one record per feature in the vector layer and rows uh, in the record uh, is called the records and the columns in the table they is called the field and field are representing the properties, various properties of the feature. So, it could be height, it could be color, it could be pH value, it could be temperature. So, anything could be there as a property. These fields can contain numerical data or the string data or the text data or any other information. These DBMS are very, very useful uh, as far as the storing the large data is concerned or you want to uh, have the data security or you want to make a query from the data set. So, uh, all these functionalities can be performed once we have the perfect DVMS. Thank you.